In this video, we're going to create a new Java class which will hold user details like user ID, first name, last name, and it will be this Java class that will be used to store user details in MySQL database. So I'm going to create a new uh, Java class and a new package. I'm going to create new class because this class is going to encapsulate user details like first name, last name, and it will be used to persist this information into a database. I'll call it user entity and I will put it into IO package data layer and I will call this package entity as well. All the Java classes that are going to serve as entity classes that are going to be persisted into a database, I'm going to put into this entity package. And I will also make this entity class implement serializable. So I will add an interface serializable and click on OK and click on Finish. So here we go, we have an empty class and let's first move mouse over the user entity class name and add the generated serial version ID, okay? And now we're going to add a few fields and these fields will hold information that we're going to store and that we're going to generate. The first field that I like to add is ID. So I'm going to create private loan ID. And this field is going to be a special field. I will need to annotate it with a few special annotations. First of all, this field is going to be an ID. So I'm going to annotate it with ID annotation. And let me import this annotation from JavaX persistence. And this ID is going to be uh, a primary key and it's going to be auto incremented every time a new record is inserted into our database table. So let me add the generated value annotation and the value will be generated and assigned and auto incremented one by one for us by the framework. Now, before we continue adding other fields, let's annotate the class itself. This class will be persisted into a database, into a database table, which means we will need to annotate this class with an entity annotation. Add entity and let me import entity annotation. I'll need to give it a name, which will be a name of the table that will be created to store user records. So my table name will be called users, like this. So let me add a few other fields, like private string user ID, and this field is to hold the alphanumeric public user ID, which we'll be sending back to a mobile application with a response. And this will be a value of user ID, which is safe to pass around the network in our HTTP requests. And the rest of the fields like private string first name, private string last name, Okay, I have added a few more fields and I'm going to annotate them as well. So the first one is user ID and this field is a required field. We don't want a record in our database that doesn't have alphanumeric user ID which identifies our record. So I'm going to add a special annotation for it to set it as a required field. And the annotation is called column and I will need to set nullable equals false. Let me import column annotation. Okay, the next field will be the first name, which I also want to be required. So I will copy this um, nullable false, and I will also set the size for this field. If I do not set the size for the field, it will be created with the maximum lens that a varchar field can contain which is at 255 characters. But to be more efficient, I will set the length of this field to 50 characters. So I'm going to say length equals to 50. And I will copy this annotation and set it for other fields as well. So I want my last name to also be around 50. And my email address, let's set it to 100. Email address might contain first name plus last name plus the main name, so let's make it 120, something like this. And then the value of encrypted password, well, uh, I'm not going to set any a character limit on this field because a different encryption mechanism can be used, so I will leave it just a required field. 
email verification token um, let's not make it a required field and email verification status this one actually needs to be a boolean and let me set an annotation for this one as well so that's going to be nullable false and we will make it hold the default value of false and there is an attribute for that column definition equals boolean default false okay so let me save this let me add some spaces to make it visually nicer and i'm almost done with my entity class i'll generate setters and getters for this so i'm going to source and then generate getters and setters i will select all and i will uncheck serial version uid because i don't need getters and setters for this property and click on ok here we go so our entity class is ready we can always come back to it and add new fields but for us to continue this set of fields should be enough so i'll save this and let's continue to the next video